All right, hey guys. So today's lesson is gonna be just making a mug from start to finish, centering, pulling, shaping. Um, for shaping, I like to use this rubber, <coughs> excuse me, rubber rib. So let me get started here. Let's put that in. I've got a pound and a quarter of clay. So let's get to it. Slam it down there in the center. Get it wet. So I'm gonna first just start by pushing it down just to get it on the wheel head. That has a pretty secure attachment. Now for centering, you want to sit properly to protect your body. Um, I have an adjustable chair. So right now I'm almost at the very top. So I can push down to uh, cone it, cone it up and push it down from a higher distance so I can get pressure onto it. Um, later on, I will adjust my seat downwards. I really like having the adjustable seat because it makes throwing, um, during all the different stages of throwing and shaping and all of it, it makes it easier. All right, so for centering, I'm gonna brace my left arm into my hip socket. So I'm bracing. We don't want this to move at all. All right, so we wanna keep this nice and tight. This is the hand that I brace the clay with, with this palm. And it's almost like I'm pushing forward a, just a tad against it. Just a little bit, not a lot. And with this hand, I push down onto the clay And I kind of have a rounded, I'm following like the ball of clay. So this is like my hand position, pushing down. Now this is pretty centered. Um, it will center more once you start coning up and down. So I'm gonna start doing that. So to cone, first I like to sort of embrace the clay with these two palms and push in at the at the base so i'm like pushing in together and cupping it at the top just so i can get a feel for the clay and compress it inward and eventually you're going to move that motion upwards so your hand position it's nice to start and just feel out the whole process. <clears throat> so here I go, bracing with this hand and I'm almost scooping, not really a little bit from the base. So I'm like, I've got both of these right against the wheel head. I've got this hand braced and I'm gonna push in and scoop up. I'm really doing like the scooping motion with this hand while well, this hand's really just bracing. And as I pull up, I'm just feeling my palms, these palms against the clay to feel it pull up. And I'm feeling any lumps that I'm dealing with. The whole point of coning, it's almost like wedging on the wheel. And it also helps to center. So once I, once I get it up like this, I'll be a little dramatic and bring it up a little more. Once I get it up about like that, 
for a pound and a half. Then I'm gonna put this here and go slow, guys. Like, slower is better, especially if you're a beginner. So I'm pushing down and I'm, I'm, I'm giving it quite some force, like a lot of pressure down, especially with this clay, it's a little bit hard. But as I'm pushing down, I'm like rounding because you want this round edge. You don't want like a flat top. So as I push down with some force here, I'm also bracing the side with this finger here. This finger is smoothing and pushing in the side while I push down. Now, the first time you do that, see how it's all like lumpy and it gets a little wacky. You don't want these lumps here at the bottom. You really want your clay to feel in your hands. You want it to feel even and evenly distributed <laughs> evenly distributed um, and smooth. So the second time you cone that bottom, that base, this base here will get smoother. You won't get all those like lumps, which really will affect trimming later. This is the most important part of throwing a pot. Like, if you can get everything nice and smooth and take your time and go slow, it'll your piece will be even and you'll have a you'll have a much easier time throwing. So here we go. I'm gonna push down again. And I'm taking my pointer finger here and I'm just kinda pushing in while this hand's going down. It's still a little lumpy down here. I can feel it and see it with my finger. So I'm gonna do one more cone cause just cause I know myself and I think that should take care of it. Plus I'm filming so it's it's harder to like do two things at once, but all right. I'm using a lot of water right now, but that's okay. And here we go. I find it helpful to stay there. Like, even if you have to like count to 30 seconds, like don't rush, like stay here in this downward motion and give it time to like, I don't know, assimilate. Give, the, give it time to like do its thing. All right, this feels pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna push down the top, like kind of flatten it out. So you have like a flat top. And then I like to take my thumbs and drill down the middle slow and steady and always keeping it wet. Think that's funny? Sounds fun. My husband's in the room. <laughs> You're on live video. Uh, 
Just kidding. So anyway, anyway, we drill down and then once I'm down here at the base of the pot, I pull out like this is how I do it. Some people do it differently. So I'm just going to grab both walls with these thumbs, even pressure, even speed. And I'm pulling, pulling it out. I'm gonna go to about probably there because I want to make like a narrower base. And if your rim ever gets like wonky when you do that, um, you can always use this like hook method where you kind of grab it with your two fingers and your thumb and you just kind of round it out or you can take your sponge and just compress that rim down compress it down like that but i'm going to check the thickness now so that's pretty good now that I like checked my thickness, I'm gonna compress the bottom. And I'm gonna start pulling. So the way I like to start pulling is I go to the base here and I push down, I push my finger down into the bat to make a ridge, just like that. And I wet it and I take my sponge with this hand and I kind of dig underneath that, pushing down and like digging underneath scooping it up almost and I'm pushing inwards with the right hand whoops got a little aggressive there so I'm pushing I pushed inwards with this hand while well, these two fingers are almost pinching and pulling up it's short enough where I can do the pinching motion. As it gets taller, it doesn't work as well, obviously. So I'm just gonna continue pulling the walls. In that same manner, making that ridge. I'm gonna go a little faster, getting underneath it. Always taking the water out of the inside. You don't want it to sit for too long. I'm 
when it gets like uh, dry like that, it you know, you always want to keep it wet. I'm digging in pretty rough, pretty hard, because this clay is a little hard right now, this bee mix. Depends on your clay body too. If it's a softer clay body, then you don't need as much water and pressure. Okay, so now I'm starting to shape the mug. So the inside, the hand that it's inside the mug is gently starting to push against the red rib at the base moving upwards. And I'm applying quite a bit of pressure with the red rib against my hand on the inside. And I play with this for quite a while. Um, I'm just kind of a stickler about shaping. And there's many different phases um, of shaping throughout my mug throwing process. And right here, I noticed that it was a little too thick. So I applied more water to pull up again, to pull the walls up again to thin it out. So that's what I'm doing right now, just pulling again. And I believe this will be my last real pull to get the height that I want. And I'm just playing with the rim at this point because I threw it off slightly. That's okay though. It'll straighten out a little bit. And even if it's a little wonky, it's still fine. It's still gonna come out beautiful. So I'm going in again to shape with the red rib. I'm pushing outwards from the inside into the red rib and the ribs kind of pushing into the hand that's in the mug. And now I'm collaring a little bit, just bringing in the rim because I wanted more of like a narrow shape, a little belly at the bottom, but narrow in the mil middle. So gently shaping and pushing. Right now I'm pushing pretty hard with the red rib to push it in because I went a little too far. I'm using quite a bit of force as it's spinning with that red rib. Again, I'm refining the shape, taking my time, going slow, pushing in with the red rib. And I'm not even really touching the pot at all. I'm just using the rib to push against the pot. And of course, I had to wet it again to thin out that top portion. I, I tend to like things like thin um, especially at the top where your mouth will touch the mug. I like it to feel, have a nice feel while you're drinking out of it. So I'm working on the rim right now and, um, 
just getting it to where I want it. Using that red rib again to clean it up and to push it in to shape it. I really love the red rib because it's flexible and it's amazing to shape with once you get the hang of just using it and experimenting and playing with it. Right here I lost my chamois so I'm just smoothing out the rim with my flat sponge um i'll have to go get another chamois but it's fine I'm spending a lot of time on this rim because the pot got a little wonky. The clay was really hard to begin with. So now I'm just cleaning it up. Um, you can almost trim it now. So by the time it's leather hard and you go to trim the foot, um, it's pretty much already done. So I take off as much as I can right now because I'm not putting an actual foot on it, I'm just gonna round it out and have a nice curve at the bottom. So I'm also touching it up with that red rib. If you can't tell, I'm obsessed with the red rib. <laughs> and that's basically it um, for this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will get back as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.